The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from CMON. Lorenzo El Magnifico from CMON is a worker placement game where we're going to be collecting resources such as wood and stone. We're going to be having servants that are going to be helping our workers out. We're going to have characters that are going to be giving us points and special favors. We're going to be harvesting. We're going to be producing. Uh, we're going to be keeping the faith in the church. So let's see what this game is all about. I'm going to show you how to play it. And then Dad and his game group are going to review it as this is our game of the week. The first thing that we do to set up the game is each player decides on a color. Of course, Dad will choose green. And we are going to get this player board. Now, I'll show you what the player board has on it. We have spots for yellow cards. We have spots for green cards. We have a spot for our gold, our lumber, our stone, our servants, and then a handy uh, end of game scoring uh, aid at the bottom. We also have these areas over here where we will be placing our purple cards next to the board as well as blue cards next to the board. We also get this little bonus tile that fits right into this notch on our player board and you can see the artwork lines up uh, very well. Next we're going to get our workers. We're going to, we have three uh, cylinders in our own color and they each have a sticker on the top that has, uh, that matches the color of the dice. So, whoops, show you the right side there. We have a white, we have a black, and we have an orange. We also have this neutral color worker, and you'll notice that uh, the number on the top of it uh, is a zero. That means that this is only worth zero when you place it. And I'll talk about that uh, in a minute because that is very important in how you place your workers on the board. You will also get three excommunication cubes, um, and that sounds kind of harsh, and I'll talk to you about what those mean in a minute. We also get four uh, discs in our color, and we put them on various places on the board. This is our faith track. This is our military track. We have a turn order, and then we have our victory point uh, scoring track. Each player also starts with two wood, two stone, and two servants. The amount of gold we start deter is determined by our starting order. So first player gets five, second player gets six, third player gets seven, and fourth player will get eight gold. The game only lasts six rounds, and in each of those rounds there are four steps that we basically follow. We have the round setup, we have the actions, we have the Vatican report, and we have the end of round. So let me talk about the round setup. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw four development cards from the top of each of our decks and then we are going to put them in the appropriate spots on the tower. So we have four decks in four different colors. We have green, blue, yellow, and purple and they are divided up. So the first two uh, rounds they we will use the uh, ones. The third and fourth rounds we will use the twos and then the uh, fifth and sixth rounds we will use the threes. So what we're going to do is you can see that each of our towers has four slots. So we will take the first four cards uh, with the number ones on the back and we will fill the towers in with those. The first player is then going to take all three of these nice chunky dice and they are going to roll them and then place them on the appropriate spot on the board and that will determine the value of each of our workers that we're going to use. So our black workers will have a value of four, our white workers will have a value of six, and our orange workers will have a value of one. Now that's going to change at the uh, beginning of each round. Now the first turn only, we're, we are going to set up basically our Vatican, uh, which will be right here. We have a stack of tiles, and there are similar stacks that have a one, a two, and a three on them. We'll shuffle these up and we will take one of those tiles and we will put them on each of the three spots on the board. Now you might not know exactly what each of those tiles does, so the game comes with this handy excommunication tiles reference sheet. So you can look it up and you can see there are a bunch of different tiles that we are going to have. So uh, that's going to change every game. Now based on turn order, we're going to start placing our uh, workers out. 
uh, based on the values that we have on the die. So for instance, let's just say, uh, well, I've, in our scenario here, we've got blue going first. So let's say that blue decides they want to use their uh, four and they want to be able to go up into one of the towers here. The towers will show you next to them what you have to have as a minimum value and what, if any, resources you'll get. So the first two levels of the towers do not offer any resources. You need a one for the bottom level and a three for the second level. The fourth and fifth level of the towers, will you will actually start getting resources. So in this case, it will show you here, you get one wood immediately, one stone, one military, and one gold for the third level. For the fourth level, you will get better resources. Here you would get two wood, two stone, two military, and two gold. Now, the third level, you need at least a five or better in order to get to that level. The fourth level, you need a seven. Dice only go up to six. How do I get that to go to seven? That's where these servants come in. You will actually pay them in order to uh, increase the value of your worker by one. And that is important because your neutral worker starts with a value of zero. So you would use workers in order to increase his value. So back to our uh, scenario here. So the blue player decides that they want to get this green card. They have a value of four, which is better than three. They don't get any resources right away, but they will be able to take this card. So let's say they took this card. This card is going to be useful during a harvest action. Uh, and I'll talk about how the harvest actions work in a minute, but they would have to have a value of three in order to uh, collect on the harvest action. And anytime they do that, they're going to get one gold and one servant. Now, this will go on their player board where we have the green spots marked. So over here on our blue player board, he would go in this first slot right there. Now, let's say that the uh, green player decided they also wanted to go into the green tower. They use their white because it is a six and they are going to spend one of their servants and get that up to a seven. So they just return that servant to the supply. They go up here. They will now get two wood from the supply and this card, but they also have to pay an additional three gold because they were not the first ones to go to that tower. So that would increase the cost. They would place it on their player board like so. Now, green and blue can no longer go here unless they use their uh, neutral worker. Now, they would also have to pay three. So let's just say, for instance, that blue didn't go there, but green went there and green wanted to go back to this tower. Uh, and they had another servant to make this a one. They could go here. They would still have to pay the three gold because that's not the first placement in the tower, but then they would be able to take this green card and place it on their board as well. And that goes for any of the towers. Now, since I took some green cards, let's talk about that harvest action, which is down here. Now, again, let's say that it was the green player's turn and they decided to use their uh, black servant here. They could go on to this spot because they are the first player and this is going to be a value of four. So they're looking at their player board and anything that is a value of four or less, they will be able to do. So in this case, since they used a four, they would be able to get two stone. And since the one is less than four, they would also be able to get one gold. Now, one of the things I didn't point out on the card, some cards have immediate actions or immediate uh, benefits. You'll see this little lightning bolt there. So when we took this card from the tower, we also would have got two stone. Now, like the green cards work with the harvest action, the yellow cards actually work with the produce action. So let's say that I had gone into the produce phase or the produce spot. If I had any yellow cards, which would be the only reason why I would go there, uh, those cards would fire. Let's say that that was a value of four. Uh, and if these were yellow cards, the same thing would happen. I would look and see what the numbers were on the dice faces at the bottom of those cards. And then I would get all of those benefits for the ones that had that number and less. Now I mentioned this bonus uh, part of your board. 
Now, when you take the produce action, you'll be able to increase your military by one and get two coins. And when you take the harvest action, you will get one wood, one stone, and one servant. Now, these are double-sided, and I'll talk about this more in my review as far as uh, the flip side of this and how that plays into the game. So I've talked about the towers. Now let's talk about a few of the other places on the board that we can go. We can go to this area, for instance, where if we have uh, a worker here, we will immediately collect five gold. Here we will immediately collect five servants. Here in a uh, three or in a four player game, we would get three military and two gold. And here in a four player game too, we would get two of these resources that don't match. Now, going up here, you just need to have a one, and that's the same with these, because you can tell by the dice uh, faces on the bottom. But if you placed a worker there, let's just say that the blue placed his worker there, then he would get one gold and any one of these. So this could be a uh, stone and a wood, two servants, two gold, two military, or one uh, on the faith track. And if you take the faith, then you would just move up on that track. Now, speaking of the faith track, at the end of the second, fourth, and sixth rounds, we have what's called the Vatican Report. Now, the Vatican Report means that you have to have your uh, disc on the faith track equal to or greater than this spot. If not, then you would take, let's just say that the blue player was right there, and we did the Vatican report, uh, and this is the end of the second round, the blue player would then place his blue cube, his excommunication cube, on that tile, and now he suffers uh, this for the rest of the game. Uh, likewise, at the end of the fourth round, he would place, if he is not at least here, he would place a cube there, and then at the end of the sixth round, if he is not to this level, he would place his final cube there. So you want to try to keep the faith, as Billy Joel said, and not have to worry about this bad stuff. So let's say that it is the end of the second round. So we're going to do a Vatican report, and the players are both here. Um, they can make a decision. They can either support the church, and they will receive three victory points, and then they will reset on the faith track, or they can not uh, support the church, in which case they voluntarily will place one of their excommunication cubes on that tile. They're going to suffer the bad stuff for the rest of the game, but they will not reset. So they could uh, essentially keep moving up the track and maybe get all the way up to 30 points. It's kind of a push your luck thing. Uh, some of these may not affect you based on the strategy of the game, and you may want to go ahead and uh, be excommunicated for that phase. That's just uh, one of the nuances of the game that you can employ. This space here on the board also determines player order. So we randomly select player order at the beginning of the game, and we just got we have blue uh, in the first place there. If blue is the first player to go here, and all players can actually send as many of their workers there that they want, but this will determine player order based on uh, who shows up when. So since blue was the first player to go here, blue would maintain that first player position. Once green goes there, green could place three workers there. It's not going to matter. Since they would be the second color to go there, they would be in the second turn order spot. And then I mentioned this military track here. So we have a number of ways to increase our military. We can either go here and increase it by two. We can go here, increase it by three. Uh, the yellow tower will offer one and two for third and fourth level. And then uh, where that comes into play is on our board, you'll notice that for the where the green cards go, it has a military symbol above those. So the first two cards, green cards that you place here, you're fine. You don't have to worry about anything. But if you want to place a third card here, uh, you have to have at least three on the military track. Here you would need at least seven, here 12, and here 18. And then at the end of the game, when you have cards in these spots, you're going to get those corresponding victory points, which would be 1, 4, 10, and 20. Now, the uh, military track also has the numbers next to it here. So you can see for two, you can go all the way up here. There's the three, 
four, five, and six. Now you will get points at the end of the game based on where you are on the military track. If you are, let's say the, the blue player was here and the green player was there. Since blue finishes the game with a higher position on the military track, they will get five victory points. Green then would get two for second place. Third and fourth place uh, would not get any points. I mentioned that the green cards uh, help you out with your harvest actions and the yellow cards help you out with your uh, produce actions. Uh, the blue cards actually help you out uh, in other ways, mainly like this one here will add two to a value of one of your workers when you are buying a uh, green card and you'll see that this actually gives you an instant bonus of three military. Now the other cards are, are somewhat similar in what they do. The purple cards are end of game scoring bonuses. So in this case, you actually have to actually pay uh, four gold in order to get this card as well. Uh, you will also immediately get five military and at the end of the game, this will be worth four victory points. Now the game actually scales very well and they come with this, uh, these markers. So basically in a two player game, you're gonna have these areas covered up. They'll be used for a three or four player game, but uh, you would just place this over those spots like so. And you can see that the artwork kind of starts to match up there. And the same with this. So you just place that there and you'll see that there's the artwork. Uh, now you also have these other two spots. Uh, so we will use these in order to cover up these areas here. I got the right one. Uh, let's see. It goes like that. And it kind of blends in pretty seamlessly. The official names of the different cards. Greens are called territory, uh, yellow are called buildings, the blues are characters, and the purple are ventures. As I pointed out when I was showing you the purple card, even the other colored cards here sometimes have cost. So for instance, in order to build this chapel, you would need at least uh, two wood in addition to wherever that appears on the tower and paying for that with the dice value. So I talked about uh, these uh, personal bonus tiles here. Uh, the one side that you're going to start with for your first game or two, they are identical. Uh, but once you are ready to play the advanced game, you flip them all over and you'll notice that these are different. Uh, so you'll put these out and then in reverse turn order, you'll get to select uh, which ones you want. Also in the advanced game, we have these leader cards. You can see Lorenzo's picture right there. Uh, and these are various things. So when you get this part in this card, then you will get these bonuses. So there are a number of those. It's like this means when you have four purple cards and at least two yellow cards. So you can see they have various things here. If you have seven military and three on the faith, you're going to get um, basically like a, an extra guy that has a value of four. Here, wow. When you have 35 points. So you can see they're all different kinds and they have all different kinds of bonuses that they offer. So that is Lorenzo Il Magnifico. So let's see what dad's game group and dad thinks of it. I'll start with what my group thinks. Uh, they love this game. Uh, we like worker placement games anyway, but uh, several of our game group actually have gone out and bought this after playing it just one time. They liked it, liked it that much. Um, in fact, I want to say half of our game group now owns uh, a copy of this, but, uh, it's been an overwhelming success. Everyone loves the gameplay. I've not heard a single negative, uh, about the game, uh, even with the dice, because, you know, you have three dice, you have ways of mitigating, or changing, adding to the value of the dice, that sort of thing. So that has really been a non-issue. For me, I have to say that this is in my top five games of the year and is currently in contention for game of the year for me. Uh, I like everything about the game. I, I love the worker placement. I love 
the theme even because uh, you know it's kind of a almost a semi-religious theme with the Vatican report and having to have faith um, but like a lot of other games you have to be able to increase your military strength I like the variability of the cards now you're always going to see the same cards every game uh, currently I know there's an expansion coming out so that may add some other cards but the order that they are going to be in the towers and how much they are going to cost you as far as what you need on the dice uh, is going to be different. Uh, so I really like that aspect of the game. Uh, adds to, to the variability. The components are great. I love, love, love these huge chunky dice. Uh, you know, these are nice wooden rounded corner dice. They just feel great to roll. Um, you know, they stand out. Really like that. Of course, I like that in a lot of games that I play. I think all the other components are great. The only minor problem I had, and there's two two things. One is uh, the stickers. I do not like stickers on games. Uh, I am not good at putting them on, so you can tell that this is not centered. That's really kind of a minor uh, quibble because it's, you know, they're stickers. The biggest complaint I have and that is with the board. And I'm going to show you this. I showed it in the unboxing video, but I'm going to show you again. So the way the board is, uh, is cut is the main issue. Um, you can see how it folds. So we have a crease right there um, in the middle of the board. So what that does is the board is actually bowed. You can see how much of a bow that is. Now, you can put some weight on there, and eventually that will probably flatten out. But when you first take this out of the box, it's going to be, uh, it's going to teeter a little bit. And so you can see how much it does that. So that's, uh, that's the one negative. I wish they had recut the board like uh, modern board games are so that you don't have that issue. But that doesn't take away my enjoyment of the game. That's just something that I consider to be a negative, and I felt compelled to point that out. But everything else I love about this game. Uh, like I said, tons of replayability. Each turn is going to be different based on where the cards are at, the values of the dice. I like how the game scales well. Uh, a number of different strategies that you can employ by either you know, trying to load up on the, uh, the produce or the harvest actions, going for the end of game bonuses, going for, and I didn't mention this, but going for... Uh, the blue card bonus down here at the bottom, you're going to score points based on how many blue cards that you have, the character cards. So if you collect uh, six character cards, then you're going to score 21 points at the end of the game. Also, you're going to score points based on uh, every five resource combination that you have. So uh, you're, you'll score one victory point for that, which is kind of a minor thing. We've never had too many of those that uh, have really been a factor in the game but um, uh, it, it's a great game I highly recommend this game to anybody and everybody uh, just an excellent game so that is Lorenzo El Magnifico and we will catch you guys next time If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.